things you have to say including state affairs in the United States. It's kind of broad. Anything else? Uh, okay. Economic. Okay. So I'm speaking with uh, Stan Heller, uh, American uh, activist, organizer, and unionist. And uh, we have this opportunity to meet uh, here in Quebec, Montreal, Quebec, because uh, we wouldn't have been able to meet in the United States since I'm not allowed entry into the United States. So uh, we take this opportunity to uh, discuss uh, what uh, the uh, American uh, social movement, uh, in terms of your work, is uh, accomplishing now. I understand and I've seen uh, your website, The Struggle, Mm -hmm. And it's uh, quite uh, extensive. Uh, you treat a, a number of subjects, it would seem. Well, we, we are, it's a project of the Middle East Crisis Committee, which we started over 30 years ago uh, when Israel invaded Lebanon in 82. And we had a print version for a number of years, and then the electronic age comes along, and we moved to website. And we've been doing it for, I don't know, eight or nine years. And... Uh, we have a lot of things on it. I guess the main thing is links to our uh, video. We've been doing a weekly TV show for uh, 10 years now, over 10 years, almost 500 shows. Uh, it's broadcast on public access, which in the U.S., uh, the cable companies give a one channel at least uh, for free to the public that can bring virtually anything in it, and it must be shown on this one cable station. And so we do that on basically 21 stations, and it's seen from Vermont down to New York City every week. And then we can, you see it on, uh, on our website. And then we also have a YouTube channel, and we have uh, hundreds of videos there, things that maybe pieces were on the show or maybe uh, whole sections were on the show. What is the identity on YouTube? A struggle Video Media. And uh, then we'll have a section about headlines, you know, sort of the newest things going on in Middle East news. I mean, our uh, heart is really in the Palestine conflict, uh, the, the, the mistreatment, the apartheid conditions in Palestine, Israel. Um, but we got into all kinds of other areas. Uh, I mean, for years we talked about the sanctions against Iraq, which amounted to a genocide. Uh, you know, perhaps a million people killed in the 90s and the first part of the 2000s. Um, and the, you know, get, get into a lot of other issues, Iran and, uh, and, and such. Um, then recently, this, this year really, we've been started some serious archives about um, one on Egypt, one on Turkey, one uh, that we call da Zionism's Dirty Secrets, where we talk about what Zionism did in the 30 and 40, where they actually worked with uh, fascists of various stripes, including Nazis, to uh, you know, they sort of gave up on any rights for Jews, and they were making deals with these people. So that's another archive on that. Uh, of course, Palestine, Israel is uh, the biggest, and uh, you know, all kinds of other things where we we link to a lot of very serious articles on these subjects, and uh, from all points of view, not just one particular one. And uh, we think it's uh, it's quite a service. And then we also have a podcast mostly interviews that I do with uh, various people on, uh, on all kinds of issues, the latest uh, being with Margaret Kimberly from BAR, that's a Black Agenda Report, and uh, this is about Trayvon Martin and the, uh, the vindication, or, or the not vindication, but the, the freeing of Zimmerman, who, who killed this uh, fella for doing absolutely nothing at all. Most of it's on Middle East. Uh, matters. Uh, so that's another feature. So we have uh, quite a portal into uh, various activist uh, information, and video, and audio. Mm. There, uh, we are uh, uh, amongst uh, what some people consider very few uh, Jewish uh, sympathizers of the Palestinian cause, but uh, there is actually a, a movement uh, of uh, Jewish opposition against the governments of Israel and how they are treating the Palestinian people. Mm -hmm. Can you... Uh, 
uh, tell us, you know, to what extent uh, this movement is organized and uh, active? Well, probably the biggest group is Jewish Voice for Peace, which started out on the West Coast and has thousands of members and, and sympathizers. And they're involved with the BDS. They have a campaign about TIAA CREF, which is a giant pension fund. And they're trying to get it to divest, to sell off any assets that it has in the, uh, in the West Bank, uh, places that are directly making money from the occupation. And they do lots of other kinds of activities. So that's probably the, more numer the most numerous. Um, and there's various Jewish anti-Zionist groups um, that are smaller. Um, MEC has a, a listserv called Jews Who Speak Out, several hundred people who you know, discuss what kinds of things can be done to uh, advance uh, peace and uh, anti-apartheid work in, in the region and so on. And this is an international yeah, network. Yeah, I mean basically I think it started with a few petitions can't even remember what the issues were, but some outrage that, uh, that Israeli forces were doing. And, uh, you know, we would sign a petition, get new names. Oh, uh, one very early one, if I, now I remember, is about the right to return, which was an incredibly controversial issue. And in the year 2000, the Palestinians around the Internet set up uh, al Auda, the, the right to return committee. And um, maybe a year or so after that, I went to one of their conferences and, and people said, maybe we could get Jewish support for this, explicit Jewish support. And so we got a, a petition together and we thought maybe we could get, you know, 25 names. And, and in a short time we got a couple hundred. And then uh, over the next four or five months, I guess, uh, we got 500. And we sort of stopped at that point. And, and it really made an impact because a lot of Jewish people who thought I'm the only one, or I can't even raise this issue, it's so controversial, realized there were lots of Jews who understood this thing, and so uh, that was another group, group that eventually was part of this Jews who speak out. What uh, is the state of America now? Like, is there any hope for uh, a real social movement in America, as we, will, as we have seen in so many other countries? Well... We thought things were really changing, uh, what was it, 2011, with Occupy. Um, I mean, and before that, I guess, Wisconsin, where there were these mass rallies. I mean, Wisconsin was terrific. I, I wasn't there myself, but, you know, tens of thousands of people coming out in demonstrations all over the state, marching into the Capitol, occupying the Capitol. Unfortunately, uh, they kind of get shifted into an electoral dimension. They were able to mount a recall effort, and so they got a recall election for the governor who, who took a slight majority that he was elected with and claimed it was a, a mandate for a, a kind of a right-wing overhaul of the, of the government. At, at any rate, they recalled him or had a recall election, but they put in to run him the Democrat who he had just beaten. And, uh, and then it just became an electoral thing and uh, the strikes and the mass action stopped. But, uh, and they were defeated in the end. But then shortly after that, you had uh, Canadian ad busters come up with this idea, you ought to occupy Wall Street. I mean, it wasn't only their idea, but there were demonstrations in New York. They tried to occupy Wall Street. Instead, they were diverted to a park called Zuccotti Park. Thousands of people came out, uh, and it became huge because it was imitated all over the United States. Occupy was everything. Uh, the term, uh, you know, we are the 99%. Everybody understands that now. And this, uh, you know, this was huge in the United States because the labor movement had kind of capitulated and always talked about middle class. You know, we want to be the middle class, as if uh, everybody from the owner of a company to uh, a school principal to the guy working in a factory was all the same class. I mean, it was ridiculous. But with Occupy, they, they really put some certain amount of clarity in you know, the 1% versus the 99%. Uh, I mean, it's certainly, it's it's. It's more complicated than that, but the idea that there's a real opposition and not just uh, 
we are all really getting along except for some malcontents. They really brought that up. But, uh, you know, it went on and it did some good work. It had some defects in the way they did direct democracy because they, they were trying to get unanimity on almost everything. And it just took hours and hours to settle the slightest uh, dispute. But the big thing was the authorities decided to bust it up. And they went into Zuccotti Park. They went into in San Francisco and everywhere else. And they forced the people out of these parks or the places that they were occupying. And so now things are at a very low ebb. But uh, there'll be some new formation eventually. The uh, U.S. government claims that the economy has turned around and is on, uh, on its way to an upsurge. Uh, mm -hmm. do, do you see this uh, in, the, in the actual American society? Well, it's in the stock market. They decided that the, uh, that the last Great Recession was caused by too easy access to money. And so there was a financial freeze up, so they made the access to money even easier. And so, uh, you know, now the bond rates are, you know, practically zero and the banks can get money for nothing. And uh, so you can't put your money in a bank, so you have to go in the stock market. Oh, amazing, the stock market is up at record highs. But, uh, you know, the unemployment is still really bad. We have about 12 million that the government says are unemployed. But if you add all the people in who are, have, you know, left the labor force, in other words, they, there's no point in looking anymore, or they're working part-time and want a full-time job, you're talking about 20 million people. So, so that's an awful lot. And especially people in their 50s, once they got unemployed, nobody wants to look at their, their uh, record anymore. And then the young people, too, uh, in their 20s are having a very hard time getting a job. So this, the, pro the prosperity is, for a certain layer, very superficial. There's a lot of problems. Blacks, in particular, have a, a huge loss in capital. I mean, they had it in their houses, and though there's recently been an uptick in the value of houses, still it's it's really way down from you know maybe 10 years ago. So it's not that great. We'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for uh, explaining this to us, uh, to both our uh, Canadian, Quebec, and international uh, uh, viewers. Uh, and uh, we look forward to uh, what uh, will be achieved by uh, the uh, American social movement. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you.